So here's a question that's been haunting me. Why has Apple been allowed to charge $6,000 for a 6K monitor with a stand for six years with basically zero competition? The Pro Display XDR launched in 2019. Since then, nothing, nada, just Apple sitting pretty with the only 6K option that's viable on the market for Mac. And look, I get it, I've used the Pro Display XDR in the Apple store. It's gorgeous, that 16,000 nit HDR, chef's kiss. But six grand for a monitor for most people, not sure. We might even get the Pro Display XDR2 this year, and I can tell you now, I probably won't be able to afford it. I'm sorry, but unless it files my taxes and makes me coffee, it's a tough sell. Sorry, it's terrible. Something arrived at my door this week that might change that. This is the Qcon G3 2P. It's 6K resolution, it's 32 inches, and it looks suspiciously like a certain Apple product. It costs $1,800, including the stand, and the VESA mount, and all the cables. So the question is, can a monitor at a third of the price actually deliver against that? Apple Goliath. So let's get this thing out, set it up and put it through its paces. And I'll be completely honest about whether this is actually worth your money or just a pretty face. Apple are not going to like this. Thank you to QCon for sending this over and partnering on the video and to me for my new minimal monthly calendar wallpapers. Ha! <laughs> let's go. Right, let's crack this thing open. Now, the first thing that we'll probably notice is that the packaging is not very Apple-esque. It's pretty simple, but I suppose that's not important once you've opened it. Okay, I take that back. Maybe it is quite Apple-esque. Okay, wow. They've definitely, <laughs> those little holes, very familiar. Although a little different to the original. I think the Pro Display XDR will have a little bit more depth on those, but you know, let's get this thing set up. The stand clicks in pretty easily. Really nice build quality on it actually. Solid aluminium feel, not cheap at all. Now you don't see that easily with the HDR, a beautifully engineered VESA mount. Right, time to show the front of the monitor. So satisfying. Okay, I mean, that is really close. The bezels, I think, are slightly thicker than the Apple version, but we're talking, I would say, millimeters. I think most people would not spot the difference. And what I do love here is what's included. That stand, we've got the full rotation into portrait mode if you want it, although I don't quite know how that works on the stand. I presume you do that on the VESA mount. The VESA mount adapter is really good. And this is the big difference, right? All of these ports, you don't get that range of ports on the Apple version. So on that front, this thing is doing really well two HDMI ports, a display port, three USB-C ports, and a 3.5 headphone jack in the back. Much more than Apple gives you. So for you PC users or people that just want more ports, this is great. I can use it as a monitor for my camera. I've got two remotes. This little remote, absolutely genius for changing settings without reaching around the back like some kind of a tech archeologist. Okay, I don't know if you can see from my top camera here, but this isn't quite as refined around here. You've got a little bit of a raised edge. It isn't a perfect match to the mount. The edges all look pretty good though. It's pretty well done. Okay, so it isn't completely as perfect a build. You're never gonna quite match that 6K beautiful Apple machining, but it's really, really close. And at this price, it's fine. We're gonna live. Now, one thing I really appreciate is this, that it can charge your MacBook up to 100 watts over the USB-C. So genuinely one cable to rule them all. So connected to your MacBook, get power delivery, get video output, get USB-C pass-through. That's exactly how I want to work. Okay, let's plug it in and see what happens. There's a little tiny button under here. Koi-Con, Q-Con, let me know in the comments how you say it. Not sure how you would. Okay, wow, that is pretty. That is really nice. So we should probably talk here about the specs and how it compares to the six grand Apple Monster. But first, actually, what do you think of this that I'm running right now on the display? These are from my minimal monthly wallpaper packs. 
I'm pretty proud of the way that we've designed these. They allow you to do color shifts with the mood of each season, and they give you this little bit of character to your workspace each month. And yes, of course, we've designed these for the specific Mac native resolutions. So we've got 6K, 5K, MacBook, and iPad. This is the 6K version designed for this monitor. So you can see it's cutting off slightly on the MacBook, and then we've got the full version up here. And I've got to say, the color is really not far off between the MacBook's OLED and the IPS screen. So you really do see the quality on there. So why don't we drop something a bit different in? Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. So this sounds like your kind of thing. We've got gradient options in here, and we also have solid color options. So if I find the, there's a solid color option too. Really nice match. So if this sounds like your kind of thing, click the link in the description to check them out, and I hope you enjoy them. Anyway, back to these monitor specs. So what are we working with here? Resolution is 6144 by 3456. A fun fact, that's actually higher than the Pro Display XDR, which is 6016 by 3384 pixels. So technically, you're getting more pixels. Not that anyone's counting. I'm counting a little bit. The panel is IPS, not mini LED like the Pro Display XDR. That has got to be the biggest difference for all. And perhaps the brightness. This one only goes up to 500 nits. The Pro Display XDR can do 1600 nits. And we'll see what the new one does if they release it in 2026. But that's kind of it. And I've got to say, looking at this, the precision and the quality of the image, it really is great. It is just so crisp. Really love it. There's a slight dimming at the edge, perhaps. So you maybe don't quite have as bright an edge to the corners, but it's really hard to tell the difference. The size 32 inches, it's big for a lot of people. I'm really enjoying it, particularly for split screen working on say, looking at one web page and then another. It's the same as Apple's offering. And to be honest, it's really hard to find that anywhere else. There are two more that have recently been released in 6K. LG just released their ultra fine 6K at around $2,000 with Thunderbolt 5. And Asus have their ProArt 6K display at about 1300. So the 6K market has now finally woken up. But here's what neither of those have, this Apple aesthetic. If you want something that visually fits the Apple ecosystem so well, just like this, then the aluminum finish of this almost pro display XDR to the untrained eye will really get people double taking. This is your only option outside of Apple right now, if you want that. Is it worth the extra few hundred over the Asus? That's a personal call for some people, absolutely. For others, they'd probably rather save their money and not care about the design language. And you should also be aware that QCon has also done a 5K version that looks, well, rather like the Apple Studio display. At, you guessed it, half the price. And that could be a great bet for most people. And on that note, they actually also make a version of the 32 inch and 27 inch displays at 144 hertz refresh rate, but those are 4K. That's compelling for gamers who don't mind a bit of scaling, but want smooth scroll. But this stays at 60 hertz, so you can get that five or 6K display. Now for color accuracy, this is probably a little cooler maybe a touch more towards the blue, but you can adjust that with the remote and it's 90% of the way there. Now they claim that this monitor is 99% of the sRGB and 99% of the DCI P3 color gamut. So I would say that that is a pretty good start. In terms of the blacks, you can see the difference between the MacBook and the monitor. You don't quite have that depth of black as the LED, but you know, to be expected. But unless you're doing serious HDR color grading, most people won't notice that day to day. And if you're watching this right now and thinking, all right, Simon, but how does this actually compare side by sides to the Pro Display XDR? Well, I don't have a Pro Display XDR at home because I don't have five or 6,000 pounds lying around for a monitor. Shocking, I know. But I do know who does have both, and that is Olia. So let's take a look at his side-by-side -side footage. Can you tell which is which? From the front, they're practically twins, and the back is where I think you see the design differences, and the stand profile's nearly identical thickness. Now, here's my perspective from actually using the Pro Display XDR in the Apple Store. The HDR experience 
is unreal. When you're watching HDR content in that 16,000 nit display, it's like someone took the sun and put it behind your video. Genuinely stunning. That's a terrible line. But here's the thing, how often are you actually watching HDR content at peak brightness? For most of us doing design work, editing videos, browsing the web, writing documents, 500 nits is plenty. It's bright, it's sharp, and it's 6K. So the Pro Display XDR is a professional reference monitor built for color critical video and photography work. It's factory calibrated to compete with monitors that cost $20,000, $30,000 in the film industry. This, this is a great 6K monitor for people who want the resolution and the aesthetics without selling a kidney. All right, I've got one tiny quibble about this monitor. So I'm in two screen mode. I shut it, it goes into clamshell and it still shows me what I need to see. If I unplug it and plugged it back in, what I would expect to see happen is the home screen turn up for me to be able to sign in, but it doesn't. So I have to click the space bar to turn it on and put my information in. I don't find that with my other monitor. It's a tiny quibble, but it just means that no signal thing doesn't look so good when you plug your computer in. You want to be able to log in when you plug it in. Small thing might be something you want to keep in mind. So is the Koi-Con Qcon G32P worth it? If you're a professional colorist who needs reference grade HDR and 1,600 nits, no. Get the Pro Display XDR or wait for the rumored Pro Display XDR2 that might land this year. But if you're like me, someone who wants 6K resolution, 32 inches of screen real estate without that scaling, so Mac native scaling, with that premium aesthetic, this thing is brilliant for under $2,000. Now, $2,000 does seem like a lot of money still for what is essentially a copy, but it's a very, very good copy. The build quality is great. I would say this is delivering 85% of the Pro Display XDR experience at less than a third of the price. For most regular people, that's a pretty compelling deal. Anyway, click my face to get subscribed if you haven't. Don't forget to grab my new calendar wallpapers below. And if you're curious about getting the most out of your Mac, whatever monitor you're using, you should probably watch this video next for how to customize your Mac setup for calm, focused productivity. See you on the next one. Bye.